Welcome to another Titan Effect one-shot on Crossroads Games. Um, and with another showcase comes another chance to win a copy of this wonderful setting. We are giving away five PDF copies and one physical copy of Titan Effect. So all you have to do is watch some cool people, play some cool characters, and do some cool stuff, and you could win. So Future Me is in the chat right now telling you how you can enter into this giveaway. Now we'll go. Our scene opens as a file is smacked down onto a desk and it's blocking the work that our first character was looking at. And as the camera sees that character look up from their desk, Chrissy, who do we see looking up before us? You see a pretty, a pretty muscular, like very obviously muscular woman um, looking to be in her early thirties. Um, she has long, dark hair, dark eyes, um, looks as if she ha hasn't slept in a while. She's got a few scars on her face. Um, and right now she's looking kind of annoyed. More work. Yeah, and as you look up, you see sitting on the edge of your desk after plopping the file down is a familiar man by the name of Ethan Sharma. Uh, brown skin, golden brown eyes, perfectly trimmed black beard with like a healthy head of hair, kind of fluffy at the top, shaved sides. Um, and he kind of goes to like put his hands up, but he's holding co a coffee. Uh, and he says, I come in peace and with a good one this time. And he like points down to the file, hands you the coffee, um, nods to the file as he starts taking a drink of his own. I, I kind of look up. You're lucky you're so pretty to look at. Otherwise, I might be more annoyed. And I start <laughs> flipping through. He wakes through. and takes a drink. Uh, you open the file. You see Mutagen X in big, bold letters up at the top. And Ethan s swallows and talks as you read. Mutagen X, created by a directorate scientist by the name of Xander Colstock. A genius. It's only a shame the directorate scooped him up before we did. Ah, oh, this is dangerous in the wrong hands. You're not wrong. Uh, the directorate cannot use this mutagen. Another day, another bioweapon. We need to get the team together and get this mutagen before they have a chance to mass produce it. I mean, you remember what happened with Typhon and the Soma virus samples. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Do you, are you going to call them? Would you like me? Do you want to split it up? Eh, go find them. I'll start getting the armory ready. And okay. he holds up a donut that he has been kind of like hiding in a bag tucked under his arm, hands it over to you before sliding off the desk and walking away. Oh, oh, how sweet. As you stand up and walk away, the camera lingers and just pans down to like the desk plate, uh, the okay. little name tag. You'll see on the name tag there is a Alexandra stone, but there's also the engraving with two lightning bolts on either side um, at the end that says bolt. And um, she will grab the coffee, take a bite into the donut, and stand up to walk out. And as you do, she is fully dressed in black a little. She doesn't have her armor on yet, so right now she's just got like a black sweatshirt, black pants, and a pretty decent tactical belt that she can throw some stuff on when necessary. Wonderful. And the scene kind of cuts to black and changes over to another place in this Spear headquarters building. Candace, where do we find your character? Describe them and what are they doing? I think you probably find uh, Phoenix Walters in the bathroom. Um, they're practicing kind of some poses and some stances in the mirror and, and kind of practicing their voices and their postures and um, attempting to kind of prepare mentally for having to kind of infiltrate uh, their next job. Um, they are five seven, not too tall, um, sinewy body, um, very kind of lanky and lithe. Um, used to be, you know, look like they look like they're fit, like they're in really great shape, um, but they're not as muscular um, as Bolt. Um, she has um, 
kind of like a shoulder length, like kinky curly hair. Um, and she's wearing um, kind of a, a rather loud looking getup, um, Bermuda kind of Bahamas shirt um, and a beanie uh, smells unmistakably of very kind bud um, and is just has has half a smile on their face, kind of not not overly serious as they're trying to get hyped up uh, anticipating their next mission. Perfect. And I think the camera is focused on you, but sees the bathroom door open and sees like the silhouette of uh, Bolt in the doorway. And then we cut over to another place in the Spear headquarters. Piper, where is your character? What do they look like? And what are they doing? I think currently uh, you see kind of panning into, uh, I would say, maybe a bedroom of sorts on the on the door itself. There's uh, a label saying Spectre and inside the room is filled just with heavy, heavy smoke. It's almost like there's no air currently in here besides just the smoke hanging. Um, you see in a dark heathered uh, gray tank top, um, a fairly sinewy individual, uh, muscles defined, a little bit of punch on the stomach, um, definitely a bit more um, of a larger individual. Um, bald head, uh, you can't see their face currently, but you can tell there's a cigarello in their mouth, the scent of cherry throughout the room. Um, they wear kind of shapewear on uh, over their hips and their legs, and they're currently trying to beat their time in kind of disassembling their prize well, uh, their prize weapon, um, Pepper, uh, kind of disassembling it, cleaning it, putting it back together as they have the cigarello kind of chomped between their teeth and just quickly um, taking it apart, putting it back together, trying to up their speed. And if they hear a noise at the door, you see that they quickly kind of grab, it looks like kind of a balaclava, like a half balaclava, pulling it over their head. And it looks to be a skeletal kind of cat mask. Um, and as they turn around, you see these very dark brown eyes looking towards the door. Yeah, and again, we see uh, Bolt's silhouette in the door as the smoke is kind of rolling out of the room as the door has been opened. And then we cut to our final character, Kaz. Where is your character? What does he look like? And what is he doing? Uh, yeah, um, so camera sort of pans into another room, um, very sort of very barren. Um, there's not much in this space besides like what's necessary. Um, I think the only thing that really stands out is there is a very nice espresso machine sort of off to the side. Um, and you see um, this very um, like large sort of figure in the room um, who clearly has like just like gotten uh, done like working out or something like very just large beefy um, uh, like man sitting like sort of like getting dressed putting combat boots on a shirt that is clearly like a size too small um, and like is just very like you look and there's um so nico is his name but he goes by havoc um given his uh his sort of notoriety um and um he's this sort of he has like slightly pointed ears um he has like mutton chops that are very like sort of like stick out at the edges and very spiked back hair um and a little bit of like a, a like a five o'clock shadow um sort of beard going on um very like average like height but like very clearly like has a lot of muscle um and it's just extremely like hairy wherever like skin is showing um and he sort of like has these very bright um sort of uh greenish eyes um and he sort of gets up um and starts to like create some espresso like has like four shots of espresso and then just like downs them all in like one gulp um, and then just sort of like clearly like like just sort of like pumps himself up a little like gets a little excited and like is like and as soon as he like kind of hears I think the door um, just about to be knocked on um, with a little bit of his heightened senses so yeah the the face kind of like turns over to look at the door as the door opens up and then we cut to the four of you 
heading down the hallway towards the armory. Uh, we, you've all been filled in on what was seen in the file, um, kind of what you're in for, and you push open the armory doors to see Ethan readying a spread of spear regulation weapons on the center table. Uh, tell us what your characters gravitate to. What are they grabbing? What are they gearing up for? You see Bolt kind of look over the weapons. She's quite frankly her own weapon, so she keeps it fairly simple. She grabs a um, a combat knife and tucks it into like a little sheath that's on her belt. And then she just grabs a interesting little looking little pistol and tucks it away and then throws a rifle under her back and attaches it to her tactical sling. I don't know. So many goodies, so little time. Uh, fuck. And you can <laughs> see, like, Phoenix is kind of uh, a kid in a candy store looking at this, like, just row after row after row of arms um, and finally settles on recognizing that they need their equipment to either fit with what, how they look or be small enough to kind of go with, uh, with the way that they're dressed. Um, she grabs uh, a combat knife um, a little expandable um, baton uh, for kind of close up, and then the HK PSG one, um, and kind of just straps that on to her back. And you see Spectre kind of approach. They have already have uh, their sniper rifle um, pepper with them, and I think they have a. Um, assault rifle that they usually claim there's like some scratches that are in the side uh and this one is salt and they kind of reach out to the fn scar h and on their back their sniper rifle is also the hk psg1 um they quickly take a, a smaller pistol putting into the side arms and you see them uh look over the armor taking some of the tactical body armor almost nearly kind of doubling their chest size as they sling it on um putting some climbing gear attaching that to grappling hooks um kind of sitting around their waist uh and they kind of take the um the comm link kind of inserting it underneath their now uh, turtleneck, making sure that it's kind of working. And all of you hear this kind of like squeal as they begin to test it. And they're like, sorry there, my bad. Oh. Um, Havoc sort of looks around and is like, do we know what kind of mission this is? Or, uh, nah, never mind. Grenades are always a good, uh, choice whenever I go um and so grabs a grenade launcher um grabs like two flashbag flashbang grenades um two incinerary grenades um sort of looks around and like clearly has like a little greedy look on his face um and he grabs a combat knife a glock and also <laughs> a shotgun um just in case uh, and just has like a complete arsenal like just strapped to him now <laughs> and as you just keep like pulling things over to you, like reaching, like, you know, stretching over the table to grab something else and pull it closer. Uh, you see Ethan is clipping on a few different things himself. Uh, there's a belt that goes across his chest with two doses of antitoxin in the front and a shotgun holster on the back. You see a pistol on his thigh and a boot knife. This is his usual loadout. He never differs from this. Um, and he's watching Havoc grabbing everything and just pulling it all toward him. And he's like, once we get you close, you'll be able to scout out the base for a point of entry. I'll be driving you as close as I can to the base and watching for your exit. Their anti-aircraft is annoyingly efficient at this base, so we're doing this on wheels. That makes the extraction challenging. And at that last word, he grabs a box and begins to hand each of you a small orange flare gun. Uh, I will come to you at this signal, but so will the entirety of the directorate, so use them in emergencies only, yeah? And he's kind of handing them, making eye contact with each of you as you're grabbing them. Uh, all right, well, I'll give you a few. I'm going to go get the vehicle ready. I'll meet you outside. And he turns and exits the room to leave the four of you in this armory. Oh, y'all are y'all are right. I guess armor and grenades might be, might be good. So I'm going to go ahead and grab those. I had not grabbed those previously, so I'm just going to... You'll see her, like, hurriedly strapping on her body armor that she completely forgot to grab and um, throwing a few grenades into one of her pocket pouches. Smart Havoc. Yeah. You see that Spectre um, kind of moves to the wall and 
grabs one of the gas masks and tosses it your way, Bolt, and says, you might need this too. Oh, all right. I mean, I'm, I'm not a huge fan of covering my pretty face, but I suppose when it's necessary. I mean, it's better than, I don't know, getting hit with tear gas or sleeping gas. But if you really want to be exposed, you can pass out to no coverage. <laughs> That, that's very, that's very valid. Thank you. I appreciate it. Of course. Phoenix has two pistols in front of them, a Glock and like a smaller guy. And they're just like, have it. I need yeah. the Glock, right? No, oh, you always need the Glock. I mean, mm -hmm. when All in right. doubt, the bigger one is the better one. So. <laughs> All right. And like, you see, they like kind of like slip it like into a little holster inside of um they're like wearing a holster outside of their um their bahama shirt and they kind of slip it in and look around at everybody I couldn't ask for a better team i mean feeling pretty safe i don't mm. know if uh that's you know something silly but i think i'm ready i think we're ready for this mission and you can see they're trying to like hype everybody up but they're not very convincing <laughs> <laughs> It's fine. I was getting a little bored. I'm thinking I'm feeling a little energized about it. Did boss tell you anything, you know, special about the mission? Anything sensitive? Mm -hmm. Just, just showed me. How I do. I still have the file. He didn't take that, right? Yeah, you probably still have the file. I'll, I'll, I'll share that around. Just everything that was in this. Nothing more specific. I don't know. It's because if it's because he didn't know anything more specific, or if it's not for our ears just yet. Seems like they should have told us everything, though, so... Yeah, I mean, looking, are... in, looking in the file, you see, like, a photo of, um, uh, the Directorate Scientist, Xander Kolstock. Um, you see a lot of, like, photos that were clearly taken from far away and, like, blown up of, like, people passing, uh, cases um not a lot of information though it's just you know they we have this new mutagen in uh production and it needs to be stopped before they continue to actually mass produce this thing we don't need another soma virus on our hands no no we certainly don't yeah all right well i mean i guess by now we should be used to not having all the information until we get there on the job but Sure would be nice to know what you're walking into sometimes. I don't know. Maybe it might make it too easy. I like a little <laughs> challenge. Heaven fucking forbid, right? <laughs> and I think at that, the scene kind of like cuts to black and um, we cut to everyone getting into the vehicle. You all get into the vehicle that Ethan has chosen for the mission. It's just a like four door yellow pickup truck. And there's this moment where you walk out and you're like, Ethan, what the fuck? Um, you're expecting some, you know, tactical vehicle. Four-door, yellow pickup truck. Uh, there's something in the back with a blue tarp secured over it. Um, and enough room in the cab for f the five of you to sit in. Like, I, 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 I run outside and I see this, like, bright yellow truck and I'm like, Yes! Hide in plain sight! That's what I say. You gotta hide in plain sight because nobody expects you and nobody sees you coming. So, this is great. And, like, I open the door and I kind of slide in. Um, and I toss my, my bigger gun in the back and tuck my other one kind of into the back of my jeans as I'm sitting down. Y'all um, coming? Or? Spectre looks between the other two big beefcakes that we have in the party and just looks between Bolts and Havoc and says, have fun in the back seat and just immediately <laughs> goes to passenger. <laughs> oh, fine, fine. All right. I'm going to climb into the back, kind of squish in. I'd, I'd say between me and Havoc, we're probably squishing poor yeah, Phoenix. Very and... much, yeah. I'm sturdier <laughs> than I look, first of all. <laughs> right, I'm very tough. And second of all, it smells like fancy perfume and cologne back here, and I'm, I'm, in, I'm in heaven. <laughs> I suppose I showered today. So the ride up I smoke, will we go? I mean, if you smoke, I'm on smoke, so. Ethan right. Ethan says what he says every single time. Please do not smoke, and in the, in the you're already, like... It's already letting up. <laughs> Sorry, too late. 
does vaping <laughs> count? Because vaping ain't really smoking, Ethan. So. Uh, you just you just kind of peels out of the uh, little garage and heads off and finally gets on the little trail and once you're set off on this, he kind of just says, it's been a minute since you've had a mission out on the field, hasn't it? Actually, yeah. 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 It's been getting really dull around the office. I'm honestly What's, surprised um, you stayed in so long. What's in the, the back? Um, I Don't worry about that. Look. That's yeah. for me. Oh. And I, you just see, like, this little excited smile from, like, the rearview mirror. Like, he's really excited to reveal that whenever he can. All right. Um, Have your fun, I guess. Yeah, always saving the good shit for himself. That's fine. Yeah. We see how it is, boss. Well, this mission sounds straightforward enough. He kind of assures as he's now veering off the trail. Uh, you're now kind of going off um, to... Uh almost like flank the area in a sense um get in get the mutagen samples get out piece of cake and he winks in the rear view mirror uh when has a straightforward mission ever gone wrong never not once not once not a single time certainly I, not every time i was about to say i feel like every time i'm given a straightforward mission it's definitely not and then it goes wrong but that <laughs> might just be me so <laughs> I mean, yeah, it might be you, but also, agreed. I need you to agree with me, but that's fine. Thank you. <clears throat> Sorry, I thought you wanted backup. No, no, that. it's, yeah, you know, you're good, you're right. <clears throat> I was, put that on myself. There, there, and just, like, reaches a hand back to, like, air, air pat oh, where you be, are. Be careful with the grenades and your, your, yeah, it's... I'm not gonna pull any pins. No, I mean, like, what if like, you're, you know, you're. I don't you're... have grenades. Oh, okay. That's Just fine. got guns. Okay. I think Phoenix is just watching this, like. <laughs> There's this moment where, like, Ethan's not even uh surprised by anything that is happening right now you could pull the pin on a grenade and he probably wouldn't even be surprised at this point he's he's just driving um and he kind of just quiets down and listens to the chatter between all of you um and as you are getting nearer to the location there's sand and dirt surrounding everything uh ethan's like jovial and joking demeanor kind of hardens a little bit the closer that you get brow kind of furrowing slightly and his expression becomes more serious as he's just scanning the area in front to keep an eye out for any enemies. Uh, you can see the directorate base in the distance and Ethan um, still kind of moving around off of the road to get closer, stops the truck and he says, all right, team. And he's kind of just glancing out of the um, windshield, puts it in the park, cuts the engine. It's all you now. Okay, okay. What what time of what time of day or night is it? Uh it is sunset. So it's not quite dark yet, but it's getting there. So we're and... not in a civilian area. No. Okay. Phoenix starts to get undressed. In our little file, were there any sort of like blueprints or like a map of layout of the of the base that we're going to um there were like exterior shots of the base uh you know um it's uh gated all the way around much like a like a prison like the the fence with the razor wire up at the top all the way around this base um there's about four feet of concrete like concrete wall around underneath the fence itself um, you, it ima you imagine it probably goes into the ground a little bit, so it's not, you're not able to just dig under the fence, you know? Um, but that's it. You might, you can kind of spot some locations where there are cameras, uh, so you kind of have that knowledge as well, but you don't have a lot of the actual layout of inside of the base. Just exterior stuff. Right, team, what's the plan? And Spectre will start getting out of the truck. Well, I can... I can 
help with a little bit with us being able to stealth inside. Make it a little harder for them to see us. Phoenix has like already like changed their outfit into like grays and blacks <laughs> in anticipation of the darkness. They have um, like a suit of like light armor um, underneath their outfit. Um, if they get caught, they kind of, it almost looks like they have like a little sweatshirt on. They look like they've like, they're a runner who's like taken the wrong turn down a trail. Um, but from afar, they blend in with the shadows really well. Anything you think's gonna help us. I mean, I feel good, but don't want to get caught out. Are there, is there any high ground? Like any like hills or large trees? You're probably on the high ground right now. Awesome. Uh, it's kind of um, intentionally built lower down to hide itself from a distance. So kind of all the way around it is higher ground, but not any closer than you are now. Okay. Um, Spectre will take out their sniper rifle, kind of slinging it off their back, and would like to use the scope to kind of scope out the place to see if I can find the entrances, any people walking around, that sort of thing. Sure, let's go ahead and make a notice roll. Nice. Um, I will say you are using a scope, so I'll give you a plus two. Okay, yeah, that was, that's definitely helpful. Um, That's gonna be, uh, with that plus two, a 16. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. So, um, <laughs> everyone's kind of gathering up all of their gear. You take out this sniper, steady yourself, look through this scope, and you are just scouting out this base. Looking around, you see, I mean, you see plenty of people inside of this base, plenty of uh, directorate, like, you see officers, some sort of guards, you see scientists, all walking around. There are different tents inside of this base. And then there is an actual building. Uh, you see the building, I'll say with with that much of a success too, you see the building is very small and you kind of come to the understanding that if they are producing mutagens here, that is probably a bunker. That leads down into something much larger underneath. Um, there's no way they would have enough room in that small of a building. Um, to produce anything like that. So you know there are about six tents on the outside, one door to a building that probably leads down into a bunker. And there are plenty of people walking around everywhere. As she's kind of looking through the scope, she says, six tents, one door, bunker, lots of people. We got our hands full on this one. But what does it look bunker? like? Pardon? What do they look like? It's, um, scientists, soldiers, that sort of thing. All like humans, a... to note as well. All humans, as far as I can tell. But if it's a bunker, there might be another entrance. Probably like an escape hatch or something. Somewhere else we could look around. Maybe, maybe. I think Phoenix wants to kind of do a scan, um, focusing mostly on like the, the the hatch door to see if they can kind of discern how many people are in there, like are below. So basically I'm just kind of focusing, you guys kind of see me close my eyes and my brow kind of furrow. And I'm I, in my head, I'm like kind of seeing what I just saw when my eyes were open. Um, but I'm focusing in on that hatch and just trying to kind of, like, use um, my telepathy to kind of just, like, get, try to pick up pieces of conversation or kind of presences um, as I'm attempting to kind of, like, scan the area and see if I can judge how many people might be under there. 14. Okay, um... You're not able to get, like, the layout or anything, obviously, mm -hmm. but kind of focusing on you, you can see how many people are top side. 
So kind of trying to focus below that. Uh, you sit and it takes a while to kind of break that barrier underneath. And there aren't as many people below as there are up top. But you are still looking at maybe around a dozen people down below. Pretty stacked down there, too. About uh, 12 people, maybe Baker's dozen. Uh, I don't know, y'all. I mean, I might could get in there. I, I have my, you know, and you, she kind of turns around and shows the back of uh, the hoodie that, that they're wearing. And it has spear kind of like like almost like where the spear would normally be it has kind of like a general looking official kind of sig insignia on it um if, if people don't look too close i could probably you know charm my way in but i don't know about the rest of us 12 is a lot for one person even me 12 is an easy target when you just shoot i mean i can't argue with that that is drawing an awful lot of attention from the get-go, though. Okay, okay. Um, we disguise ourselves? Maybe. It's not try to make suit. an illusion? But that might be a smart way to go about it. Like I said, I can I can glitch out the cameras. However, I feel like that, that might possibly let them know something is up. That is also something to consider. You see the cameras going out. You're going to get a little suspicious. They're going to start coming to try and take a look personally. So, which I suppose I could glitch them out. We could wait until a few come out and take them down one by one until we make our way through. I mean, the other thing we could do is knock out a couple scientists. Two of us dress as scientists, the other of us look like soldiers, and we walk in. That's smart. Hope that works. Yeah. yeah. Phoenix already has her gun out. She's like pointing her rifle. Ready. Are there any um, scientist looking people um, that are like not in like the clear like are further away than like the rest of the people that are around the outside of the, the bunker um they're all kind of on the move uh people are kind of moving around from tent to tent none of them are outside of the fence for sure so you definitely okay. have to get inside um to run across any scientists I will say also, at the front gate, there is one little, like, watchtower where you do see someone with some sort of rifle standing. Um, they have not noticed you. They don't even seem, you don't seem to be on their radar currently, but uh, they are there and might be something to think about when actually moving to get closer. Is there... Can any of you climb? Get up that watchtower and take them out. And I can uh, climb pretty well. That might be something to consider. Right. So I climb up, do overwatch, while the rest of you go in. Right. Wait till dark, move in. Yeah, yeah. And I suppose we can just take, try and isolate guards out one by one and take their armor and just have an excuse to walk right in. I think that I'd probably go with Spectre um, so that as they're climbing up the watchtower, I could easily scale that fence um, and probably take out, try to kind of like find the perimeter and see if I can find a guard just on their own, take them out and grab their clothes. Okay. I'm not going to be quiet until you knock some people out. So, um, so I'll okay. wait until... The watchtower is done, and then I'll sneak in. Um, and are we still going with the scientist route, or we just all want to pretend like we're soldiers? I think it's going to be soldiers. Okay. 
They all seem I'll the most easily it. accessible. I, and I I'll think at that point, <laughs> at that point, Ethan like speaks up from the driver's seat. Also, like, no offense, Havoc, but I would not consider you a, a scientist. <laughs> hey, I listen. I could be a damn good scientist if I put my brain to it. I just, uh, not my life path currently. So I've never seen a scientist with that many muscles. It's true. I, I you know what? I, I'm gonna find a scientist like that one day, and I'm gonna prove you wrong. Maybe I'll He's become a scientist. just a, a small scientist. scientist. Yeah. He just kind of turns around. How much do you want to bet? What's what's the bet? Um. Shit. Um. Hundred. Easy. Cool. Hundred fifty. Done. Okay. Two hundred. <laughs> Why are you racing? Oh, well, because like if He's I win, green. then that's two hundred. Like that's good. Oh, three hundred next? Five thousand? <laughs> what are you gonna stop having? At two hundred, thank you. I that was my gonna be my game plan from the start. I just wanted to start low and see if then agreed. Two hundred, and he hold, he holds out his hand. Two hundred doesn't seem like a lot of money. I'm not impressed. Three hundred. Mm. Four fifty. Fine, fair, and I shake his hand. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you do it. Oh, yeah. That's at least like three months worth of pay. So um, I was about to say, they don't pay us well enough. Well, well, I mean, maybe we'll get paid better if we do this well. So, 450 <laughs> it is. <laughs> I appreciate your optimism. 450 and Ethan, if you lose, we get to use your fancy toy. Oh, oh, we already shook. We already shook. No, 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 no. no. Well, <laughs> I'm gonna grab his hand again and be like, and no, 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 no. <laughs> He's like hand on face, just pushing you away. Like, no, no. Already shook. Fine. Phoenix is just like, now that now that they've successfully stirred the pot, they're like ready to go in. They're starting to limber up. They get out of the car and do their stretches and everything and. All right, are we ready to cut to nightfall? Beautiful. So, if I understand correctly, Spectre and Phoenix are climbing up to get into the watchtower. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Um, <laughs> so, in that case, I'm going to need you both to roll a stealth. I will first need you to roll a stealth, and then I will need you to roll to climb. A four. Eleven. Okay. A four is a success still. Um, now both of you make your climbing rolls. That'll be probably athletics unless you want to argue something else. This is not an urban environment, right? No. Okay. Yeah, that's a seven. Sixteen. Okay. Uh, one of you is a little better at climbing. One of you is a little better at being quiet, but you both. Uh, so tell me what that looks like as you are kind of scaling up this building or up this tower, uh, knowing that, you know, your strength lies in different places, but you're still going up together. I feel like the stealth part for Phoenix, um, as they're kind of making their way from the car over to um, like the wall itself to get up into the watchtower, um, they are moving very swiftly. They're taking kind of small, quick steps that are very wide apart, um, almost gazelle-like, um, kind of trying to like stalk through, um, trying to find the quietest spots to put their feet so that they don't have to worry about being caught. Um, and by the time they get there, the momentum is so great that like they have to kind of take a moment to steady themselves before scaling up the watchtower. Um, I think quickly eclipsed by whatever Spectre is doing, because they're like... <sighs> Yeah, Spectre um, is a little bit more kind of like bear walking through the woods uh, a little bit. They're definitely noisier, especially with how much equipment they have on them. Uh, definitely slower than Phoenix. But um, as they make their way through the bushes, they kind of um, rustle as they make their way out towards the wash tower. And you see they grab one of those um, grappling hooks and kind of um, crank it up in order to throw, throwing it quickly up hooking onto the edge and just with their forearms, like no legs, just start climbing, just hand over hand, just so swiftly, just whoosh and up and done. Perfect. And what are we doing about the person in the watchtower? Um, 
I am going to use my hands to murder this man. I am going to use my hands. <laughs> Amazing. So as you are climbing up, you are reaching the top. And as you've reached that top part, you see two, like, two fingers go on as if to lean over and look down. Uh, what would you like to do? Um, instead of... I'm just going to grab them by the collar and just throw them backwards. Just... Beautiful. Uh, go ahead and um, just make a strength roll. I'm going to give you a plus two because I rolled to notice and got... Oh, no. That's a crit fail. <laughs> no! <laughs> Incredible. Uh, Phoenix, I will give you one chance to... Uh, save this situation because as you are coming up, you are like right underneath. You're climbing up right underneath and you see someone peeking over. Uh, you see Spectre reach up, grab the collar and go to pull. But as they go to pull, you see this person grab onto uh, Spectre's arms and just push and is like about to just drop. I think I uh, like I have my tactical knife kind of ready just in case there was a scuffle. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to slice their Achilles because, like, I'm <laughs> I'm slower, so like I'm coming up, like my my nose is like like is like right where their legs are as I'm kind of getting up there, and I see him, and I just lash out and get him like around, hook him around the back. Make that roll, please don't crit fail. <laughs> <laughs> that is an eighteen. Damn. So that's. Yeah. So then that means that's three wounds. Yeah. Absolutely, it does. He bleeds um, the fuck out. I am going to, you know, just because this is a fun moment that could mean everything, I'm going to spend a Benny to try to soak some of this. I'm able to soak one. Okay. So that's still two wounds on this guy. We are actually now going to draw some action cards because this has transpired. <laughs> so, um, actually, Spectre, I need you to make some sort of role to grab back on as as this achilles is severed he does let you go and so you are falling but you have plenty of things that you could grab on too so you're able to kind of like reach out and try to grab onto something what would you like to roll for that um i'll try athletics again perfect um, just to try and re-grab the rope just twisting my arm around it to try and stop my descent wonderful the six okay uh yeah, so you are able to do that. You grab onto the rope, you kind of like spin a little bit and then plant your feet on the tower itself to steady yourself. Um, as soon you hear that knife just sever that Achilles tendon, blood slams down onto his knee and you do kind of, he's about to start just yelling out in pain. We are going to draw some action cards to see the order of events. Uh, because if you can act before him, you might be able to keep him from yelling. But if he goes first... He is screaming into the universe because, ow. So, let's see. We have, uh, we have Phoenix with a queen. That's a good start. We have Spectre. Oh my god, with a king. What the yes. fuck? Yes. <laughs> and we have me with a six. <laughs> <laughs> so, instead of even doing, like, turns, how about the two of you tell me you can like plan a little bit first if you want to how this takedown looks like what would you like to do for this i mean i'm ready to like i think i probably look over to specter make sure like check in with them make sure they're okay because like that was scary for a minute i think that because phoenix is pretty strong as well correct um, phoenix is not their their strength is okay they're more agile I think Spectre, with their kind of free hand that's not wrapped around this rope, they're just going to kind of make a cutthroat symbol and kind of quickly try to scale and tackle this person down to the ground, kind of pressing their arm against their windpipe. Because, like, so I'm, like, Phoenix is very sinewy and, and kind of lanky. So you see them kind of just, like, use their acrobatics, like their athletics, to just kind of kick their leg up and over. And they kind of come down behind the two of you and just try to grab the um, the walkie-talkie. 
Okay, so I think I think this is what it looks like. I think both of you are able to kind of like flip over this wall at the same time, just in different ways. You know, you're both pushing over this wall. Uh, Spectre kind of rolls, shoves an arm into the throat just before the scream comes out. And you hear this like just really, really muffled, choked sound. And you just push a little bit harder to keep him from yelling out and alerting the entire camp. Um, Phoenix rushes over. You see him like fingers fumbling for the walkie. You grab onto the walkie, push it away. How do we eliminate this guy? Does he have a knife on him? Uh, yeah, he's got like a boot knife. I think uh, Spectre will like with their free hand takes their own knife and says, sorry, love about this and just like shoves it into their chest. Beautiful. And there's just a couple of seconds and then he falls still. <sighs> that was a fucking close one, you guys. <laughs> it, was really, it was almost like gone. Our entire cover went I alone. Know. I look over at Spectre and I'm like, eh, fucking off to a good start, huh? I mean, yeah. that was pretty, it's pretty fucked up. Yeah, no sweat. We got this. Just kind of holds up a hand for a little high five. You get like a really strong one. And then like <laughs> seconds later, she realizes that like she's not supposed to be really loud because she's like doing like a little victory dance. Yeah. Really high on, on this very minor victory. Right. And and then what? I look down um, now that we're kind of like inside of this compound, sort of. I look down to see like the closest um, guard that's on the ground. Yeah, you kind of peek over. You do see one guard that seems to be like uh, guarding the gate, uh, just kind of standing, leaning up against the tower itself. I think um, I think I'd like to telepathically seduce him to come up here. Okay. Um, how so? So he's just leaning against the gate, like kind of fucking off or whatever. And Spectre sees Phoenix kind of like tip her head over the edge and look down. I close my eyes and uh, make contact with his mind and say, you know, it'd be great. A little bit of a break. I heard, and then I like look at the badge on this guy's jacket. I, said, I think I think Richard's got that good shit. Maybe maybe go up there for some R and R. I mean, it's late at night. Who cares? Just come on up here. Just have a nice time. Nothing wrong. Kicking back five minutes. Smoke break even. And just try to like suggest that. All right. You want to make a persuasion roll? Yes. It's six. So there's this moment you see him like come up like from leaning against the tower kind of like glances around a little bit kind of glances out the front gate and kind of shrugs and is like yeah you know i could i could take a break and moves over and begins climbing up the ladder you hear the sounds of the boots on the ladder itself i'm doing everything i can to kind of just fade into the darkness okay. uh this guard that we just took down looked like they were more Spectre size, so I'm hoping this person is a little bit smaller so that I can take their uniform and not have it be ill-fitting. So I'm very much fading into the, the darkness to act as backup. Um, Spectre will silhouette themselves kind of against any light, so it's just kind of a body. They'll have pushed the other body to the corner, like, into the darkness, and they're just standing just as a silhouette, just kind of waiting for this person, still with that other person's knife in their hand incredible so you see this person climb up get all the way up kind of like you probably like maybe turned the light inward a little bit and mm -hmm. and to silhouette yourself better and he's kind of holding his hand up at the light uh looks at you i'm gonna make a notice roll none the wiser hey uh just like kind of tilt up head nod and then i will reach into my pack and offer a cigarette he steps forward still kind of blocking kind of squinting at you grabs pulls out a cigarette gets you the pack back uh puts it to his lips i would like to offer him a light <laughs> hell yeah we were on the exact same page <laughs> yes <laughs> and as the light goes up just that kind of skeletal cat mask pops up and there's a slight smirk on her face as 
Hello there. And just grabs him by the face, brings him forward, and just gonna try and just completely kill this man, too. He's a Benny. Much better. Oh, damn. Very much better. That is another 14. That's 18. Yes. I think I kind of want to... Um, I have a silencer. Like, on my pistol. So I think I just want to, like, take his head. Um, because I don't want blood all over my outfit. Just point blank shot back of the head as he's kind of like down on all fours. Again, falls silent. And the two of you are able to take these outfits. Um, I shine what? a flashlight in the opposite direction toward the car so that the other, so that everybody else knows that we're in and we're good. I think I hop down and I just resume the post by the front gate and wait. Okay. Uh, so then we cut over to Havoc and Bolt at the truck. Uh, um, Ethan is sitting in the bed of the truck eating a sandwich. And uh, it's like, mm, they made it. Thanks. Took them long enough. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> uh, in my defense, I probably could have done better. But I'm not sneaky, so I don't think it would have worked. All right, let's 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 run up and see if we can snag our, some gear of our own. Yeah? Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right, so you are heading up. Um, mm -hmm. As you get closer, I mean, you can see Spectre up on the tower. You can see Phoenix guarding the door, guarding the gate. I, I mean, I we... guess... I guess if Phoenix is at the gate... We'll just kind of walk right on in in a yeah. subtle but not obviously trying to be sneaky manner. Yeah, I hear you all approach, and you can hear whispering, Hey, uh, hey, Bolt. Mm. Yeah. Bolt? Yeah. All right, just check it. All right, hold on. And you hear, like, the latches and stuff like that and the unlocking. And I think I open it just wide enough um, probably wide enough for Havoc to get through since he's much broader. Mm -hmm. um, j so that so that it's not like fully open. I don't want anybody to be like, what the fuck is going on down there? I'm sure there's probably a digital readout of when the gate is opened anyway, but hopefully this will delay anybody from noticing if it's not just like a full kind of thing. We, uh, All right. I mean, we're kitted up. Make sure you get somebody. I think I saw two guys over there. Nine o'clock. All right. Perfect. I'm gonna start slowly creeping over in that general direction. All right, Bolt and Havoc, make a stealth roll. Okay, so that is, I have a d6 in stealth, so I'm rolling that, and then the d6 for my wild die, right? Yes, okay. and taking whichever one is higher. Ooh. Okay, so I rolled a six on one. Does that mean I roll it? Again? Roll that again and add it. Yeah. Okay. Cool, 10. Um, three. <laughs> because I don't feel like we're using a Benny for this, so it's three. Okay, all right, so Bolt and Havoc are pushing behind one of these tents. Uh, Bolt, you make it to the edge of, okay, so you make it past the first tent. Bolt, you make it to the second tent and you're behind that tent when Havoc just steps out in between two of the tents and one of the uh, people sees him from the other side and says, hey, and kind of like begins aiming a gun in that direction. This person walks over to you. So Bolt, this directorate agent is walking up to Havoc, but does not know you're there. Um, Are they close enough that I can come up from behind them and just Flip their throat. I think with that stealth roll, you can definitely try. Okay. All right. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to come up, grab him. Hello, friend. And sh all right. Uh, that make that um, fighting roll. I am going to, I am going to go ahead and spend a penny for that because that was okay. like two and a one. So we're not going to do that. All right. Better, better. Um, five. Okay. Uh, roll damage for that knife. Cool. Nine. Okay. Beautiful. So, Havoc, uh, what were you saying or doing as uh, you you know 
you know Bolt. You know how quiet Bolt is. And as this directorate agent is like walking over to you, what did that look like? Um, I sort of put my hands up and I'm like, hey, dude, there's something going on in the Watchtower. Um, I think you need, um, I think, yeah, I think uh, two dudes just absolutely like, yeah, never mind. Yeah, just kind of <laughs> maybe like taking a couple of steps backwards just to get him further yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. And then you just see Bolt come up from behind and just just slit the throat and the body like like gurgles and stumbles over and you just push him down onto the ground. One outfit acquired. You're welcome. Thanks. I am. Um... <laughs> could have handled it though and i'm just gonna walk i'm gonna sort of step over the body and i'm gonna walk over to wherever this other person is that's around so i can get this other um this other uh outfit uniform yeah you step over you can peek around the other tent and there's one person just standing kind of looking into the main uh area kind of like looking over the bunker doors um back facing you cool um can I just go up behind them and choke them out? Sure. Cool. Uh, that sounds like athletics to me. Or you can do yeah. you can do fighting if you if that's better. Um, my fighting is a D eight, so I'll do that. Okay. Ooh, that is much better. My eight exploded, so eleven. Okay. Um, what is your strength die? Uh, a D six. I'm gonna have you go ahead and roll a D six and a D four. Um, that would be a five. Okay. I'm gonna make a vigor roll real quick. That's a fail. Uh, we'll leave it at that. Um, so yeah, you kind of come up from behind, wreck the arm around, and just pull back and squeeze. And you just pull, pull him back behind the tent. And it just takes a little bit longer than you were expecting, but eventually the eyes do roll back and the body falls limp, um, Sweet. unconscious throw the body on the ground and start taking off the uniform, I guess. I think as they were doing that, Bolt would have already been putting on the other guard's uniform and then trying to find somewhere to hide the bodies fairly discreet. Um, for, make it harder for them to be found. For um, purposes that are important later on, how close is what I'm wearing to the uniform? Because if I wolf out, I'm gonna lose my clothing altogether, and the clothes that I have right now are smart clothes, and, like... They're not close at all. Awesome. <laughs> I will just change then, and yep, that's... it'll be what it is. <laughs> no one is gonna complain if you lose your clothes, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> not a soul. Yeah. <laughs> just just trying to save everyone the... the this is why we the... go on missions with Havoc. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Cool. We could bring extra smart clothes. We choose not to. Yeah. <laughs> We've actually hidden all the smart clothes. All the smart clothes are hidden. <laughs> Little dead drops. <laughs> oh, I just guess all your clothing's ripped. Oh well. <laughs> You've all you all have uh, your camouflage for the area. We have Spectre in the tower. We have Phoenix at the gate, and Bolt and Havoc are over here behind the tents. What are we doing? I feel like it makes sense to just go back to Phoenix, um, and then regroup. Mm -hmm. We also or... do have the communicators as well. Oh shit, that's right, okay. Yeah, so we can talk. Um, I think you hear Spectre over it saying, Did you get your fits? All good. Yep. Oh, I'll suit it up. Good. Where are we meeting? I can prop one of these guys up here. Make it look like someone's in the tower. I guess Maybe. right down at the bottom of the tower. I, don't, I think we took care of most of the guards. We look like guards. Nobody's going to think anything. Right. Come down. And Might look a little suspicious with all four of us, though. Walking around. I personally think it's a good idea to prop somebody up there. Cursory glance. Looks like everything's fine. That's I true. could get yelled at for leaving my post. But watchtower. I'll tell them something's up. Right. And Spectre begins kind of like taking one of the bodies and just, I mean, I probably we got have some, zip ties. <laughs> we got zip ties. You got rope, like a little, like a little marionette, and we'll just kind of prop this person up, 
I'm just like, there we go. Um, if there's like a hat, I'll put the little hat on his head, kind of secure it and just pat him on the back. Like, <laughs> there you go, buddy. Have a good time watching. And I'll start scaling down. Amazing. So we all reconvene. Is it as populated as it was before? Are people still walking around or does it seem like things have died down a bit? Yeah, there, there are still quite a few people walking around. Y'all think it's like a mall? They got one of them <laughs> signs that says you are here and it shows you where all the stuff is? Probably not, right? Like, I mean... Probably not. We got I some know. back at the agency. I'm just saying, you know, it'd be helpful for everyone. If we yeah. can, If we can get somebody that seems like they would know a little something something isolated maybe we can question them very politely about navigating our way oh, i'm so the excited compound. to watch you question someone politely <laughs> i don't know what you're talking about i'm i'm so polite i'm mm -hmm. i mean I, i'm not arguing with you hmm. I'm at, he starts looking around. I'm gonna hang, hold up my knife. I, I I call it good behavior. It helps other people be on their best behavior. I swear to God, I don't know how we get anything done. <laughs> <laughs> and I think at this point you all hear over your earpieces. Well, I don't hear any screaming, so I'm assuming you made it in okay. No, actually, I'm losing my life as I, we speak. I'm bleeding out. Yes, we're fine. No reply back. Yeah. I mean, you'll hear screaming in a minute. Fucking bolt gets away. Hmm. You're gonna owe us more donuts tomorrow. Should we find that Jack scientist? Question him. <laughs> yes, we should find a Jack scientist. I have a bet to live up to. Four hundred fifty dollars. <laughs> Jack scientist. <laughs> think Phoenix. That think Phoenix starts like looking around. Yep. Look for a strong yep. scientist. Trying to find a strong scientist. Strong Most of the scientists up here, um, now that you're now that you're down here too, in the area and closer, most of the scientists up here are probably like interns of yeah. some sort. Um, none of them look like they particularly know what they're doing. You imagine all the um the main scientists are down below. Uh, and kind of as you're looking, you see most of the people up here are guards. So maybe it's mostly scientists down below, but you can't be sure. Um, there are no jacked scientists up here. Damn it. <laughs> not even a jacked intern? Like, you're kidding scientists. me? Like... <laughs> not, not up here. Not up here. Maybe down below. Okay, okay. All right, all right. There's still hope. Still hope. Um, we should just drag one of the interns, unless we think it's better to find um, a guard who probably will know more than an intern. Yeah, but I feel like um, one of the scientists might be easy to convince. Mm -hmm. Yeah, guards tend to be a little bit more used to rough housing. I need someone that's not so quite adept at resisting my charm. What scientist looks like the most that they'd be like scared, like right on the spot? Where's the fit? Where's the like <laughs> the wiring? Where's, where's the whip? Kind of once you come to that conclusion, you're looking around, you're scanning, you see one intern carrying what looks to be like literally just a tray with cups and water in towards another tent. But they kind of trip, fumble, scooch all of it around. The, the tray flips and falls, the water slams down and pours all over the sand. And there's this moment of like, you can see their face just turns red and they go down and they're trying to pick everything up and you hear, uh, as you're kind of like zoning in on them, you hear, oh god, they're gonna kill me, they're gonna, they're absolutely gonna kill me, okay, 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 gotta pick all this up, I can't believe I wasted so much water, what if, I gotta, I, I, I gotta refill this somewhere, and you just see them look, like, looking around and picking everything up, hoping nobody has noticed. He's standing up, he's collected everything, and is kind of looking around to probably go stash this stuff literally like behind a tent somewhere until he can figure out what to do so you see him moving to go behind a tent um away from view of other people i kind of do like a very low whistle um 
that is something that only like like all of us kind of ha are, are kind of trained to hear that frequency but like i do like a little low whistle and i kind of like do like a little like nod over to the tent and i start kind of making my way in a very kind of like wide arc to get to the back so it doesn't look like we're all kind of descending at one time i think i'll try to walk in from an opposite angle of where they're coming um looking as if i'm doing a standard patrol kind of glancing around i'll walk the same way that this intern sort of walked through so that i block them from coming in like or leaving from the same way they came i will keep a lookout kind of patrolling just the area so this bolt can do her thing fantastic so those of you actually like kind of approaching this person uh is like putting the tray in cups and pitcher down jumps when they see you and like oh i somebody left this stuff here yeah <laughs> what a fucking son of a bitch am i right and like i just cover the back of this tent like i yeah. I, I turn my back on this kid and i like look out and with my my weapon in my hands to give privacy i'm gonna i'm gonna walk up i'm gonna get a little close um how many do we think if I talk to him right here, people are going to be able to hear very well? Is, or And if so, is there somewhere private that we can drag him to? Even a place more private, it's still a tent. So it's hard to muffle the voices. So as long as you talk quietly and keep him talking quietly, you should be able to have a somewhat private conversation. Cool, cool. So I'm gonna just just smile and be like, why don't why don't you have a seat for a second? We'll we'll get somebody else to help with the uh, with the water. Okay, and and sits down and is like, okay, I I admit it, I spilled the, I did it, I spilled it. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna be completely honest. We we don't we don't care. Um, I I have a question for you, and it's a very important question. How attached are you to your kneecaps? Are are they something you're fond of having? Do you have intimidate? I wouldn't have known to buy it, so no. In that case, I think I'm just I'm gonna let you roll your fighting. Okay. All right. So seven. Okay. Poor kid. I feel bad. Oh no. <laughs> There's this moment where the, the expression hasn't changed at all, but the eyes kind of glaze over slightly as if he's trying to like process what exactly was said to him. And it's like this solid four, se four full seconds of just silence and just staring at you with the same expression. And then he glances to the, all of the stuff back to you and I, I, would prefer to keep them. Okay, awesome, good. That's gonna make this next part so much easier on both of us because okay. taking off kneecaps is a lot of effort. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't want to do it today. So good. we just we we have a couple of questions, and as long as you are cooperative and answer them honestly, I I think we're we're gonna come out of this good friends, and your kneecaps will stay where they are. Does that sound sound like a good plan? What are your questions? So we're we're here looking for something. And um we don't really know where to find it. And I'm kind of hoping you can help me with that. We're we're looking for um we're we're looking for the new mutagen that was just developed here. And I'm I'm assuming you can give us a general idea. Like you you seem like a pretty knowledgeable fellow. Like you're knowledgeable enough to know that you want to keep your kneecaps. So that's a lot about it, dude. He's nodding and kind of like squinting at those of you that he can see and is like you Aries or Spear. What do you think? I don't know, this seems like the kind of stupid shit Spear would try, but it also... I mean, I know Ares has been dying to get their hands on this. Hmm. Just which one am I working with? 
Does it matter? Yeah. <laughs> I don't take kindly to being called stupid, just for the record. Oh, you're only stupid if you're a spear. Does that answer my question? <laughs> you see little lightning bolts start to flicker out from her fingers? And at Are this you going to answer mine? At this point, he reaches over to grab the pitcher and swing it at you. <laughs> okay. All right. What is your parry? Five. I didn't roll high enough damage to actually do any damage to you, but swings, you bring up your forearm and just stop this um, this pitcher, just boom, slamming up against, but he's going to get up and start sprinting away. Uh, but you're all surrounding this area. So we are going to draw some action cards here. All right, we have Bolt with a an eight. We have Spectre with a three. I do have quick. Okay, and that's draw two, take the highest? Um, I think it's, if it's draw under until, five. I think it's draw until I get a five or more. How's the Jack? A... Jack is perfect. Damn. <laughs> Phoenix has a seven. Havoc has a queen. And the enemy, I'm gonna use Benny to redraw that. Mm. With a nine. Okay, all right. Okay, mm-hmm. So, first up, first reaction here, as he is getting up and beginning to sprint away. Oh, um, can I just tackle him? Sure. <laughs> I'd just like to throw my full body weight on this kid. Like, Beautiful. Please. Yeah, let's do, uh, let's do athletics or fighting for that. Uh, seven. Havoc, as you slam into him, you especially are noticing something. What you're seeing of his body is not matching up what you are grabbing. Oh, fuck me. And as Jesus. you slam in, he is much larger than oh. he was appearing. You slam into him, and he just shoves you over and is still attempting to run past. But you now have that knowledge in that um, he is not what he seems. Okay. Um, I'm just going to be like, this guy's a lot bigger than he looks. And that's all I'm going to say as I try to get back up. Um, yeah. Beautiful. Um, Spectre, you are up next. As I'm kind of outside and patrolling, what are the odds that I kind of get a glimpse of this intern running? Um, I think I think you would have been pretty sensitive to that situation in general as you are keeping an eye. So I think maybe you didn't get like the, the first hit and swing but as that like tackle happened and you hear Havoc's like stage whisper to the rest of the group, so you you are aware and you see him starting to run off towards the bunker door. Interesting. I don't know if I think Spectre is going to shadow. I don't think Spectre is going to tackle. Um and you hear over comms saying, I mean, they might have keys to get inside, so following. Hmm. And I'm just going to shadow him. Okay. Um, and it is his turn next. You see him rush over. Uh, you see him pull out a card from, like, the uh, the little keychains with, like, the little wires on them. I can't think of what they're called, the little lanyard things. Um, pulls that out, scans something. You hear it beep, and you hear the electronic locks unlock. And he immediately opens up this door and begins shouting down. Shit. I'll misjudge that. <laughs> oh, shit. That was modest. Well, <laughs> well, <sorry. laughs> it's fine. He, Everything's fine. It's going great. He's, he's shouting and running, like heading down the steps, too. You see this door opens directly into stairs. Uh, and Bolt, you're up next. All right. At this point, I guess I've heard him shouting. And... Are there lights around? Is Yes. Okay. All right. I'm going to be like, fuck it. And I'm going to send out uh, an electromagnetic magnetic pulse with the intent to shut down electricity in my Beautiful. general vicinity. Um, that is a five. Okay. What does that look like? Um, 
Like you just see her close her eyes and then you more feel the sense of electricity. A couple sparks will sta- like start snapping up from her body, but for the most part, you just kind of feel the sense of electricity run through you as it pulses out from her and everything blacks out. Oh, yeah, make it you a little even, harder for them to see You us. even feel like the hairs on your arms, those of you around, like the hairs on your arms starting to kind of stand up a little bit, that staticky uh, shock to your clothes, and then <laughs> all the lights go out in the area. Um, okay. Anything else? Uh, I guess start walking in the general direction of where I saw him running. Perfect. Uh, I'd say you can probably, if you wanted to, get up to the door and keep it from closing. Hmm. Yeah, now that this area is shadowed, you just rush up and just put one arm kind of in the door to grab onto it. Perfect. Phoenix. I think I sprint over to the bunker because my back was to him. I don't think he knows that I'm me. And I want to catch up to try to catch up to him to talk to him. Okay. Um, yeah, like so I you sprint just, over. Yeah, yeah Bolt I, opens the door. You dart in. Hey, hey. I heard you say that there's um something's going on. There's intruders. I'm going to make a roll uh, to see if he even sus- like suspects anything at all or if he's just... Like, oh, you are, you know, you are a directorate agent, like 100%. So I'm going to probably roll a notice. There's, you're still kind of moving down the steps together. Like he is rushing down, you are right at his side. And, and he says, I don't, I don't know who they are. Um, I, th- I think, I think Aries is here. You Go ahead. Solid intel? For the hell of it, I would like for you to roll your focus real quick. Four. Okay. Um, you're not able to pick up a lot, but I think um, for a moment, like your telepathy activates a little bit as you're, you know, you just, you're trying to fool him. You're trying to kind of get in his head. And mm-hmm. for a moment, you're hearing, you don't know who this guy is, but he's not a directorate agent. Rather than blow my cover, I just keep treating him like like a, like the grunt that I think he is. Like I grab the badge and I like shake it in his face. Listen, I know that you're a fucking intern, Rick, whoever the fuck you are. But listen, like you you need to make sure that you're doing your fucking job. You should have gotten information on them, gotten intel. What you just went down here screaming with your fucking pants around your ankles. At this point, you feel a shove as he just like pushes you away, shoves you against the other side of the the wall. You're kind of like holding each other as you're as you're yelling at him, and he's like, "Listen, stop fucking yelling at me! I'm coming down here to set the alarms. What are you doing?" The fuck? I don't think so. Who are you? Who do you? Who work are you? For? What? I show my, I show my badges. I'm like, you're obviously not one of mine, because if you were, you'd have a lot more fucking respect. Damn. <laughs> And I think at this point too, those of you up top, you are hearing the gate open. Uh, the gate is opening up and a truck is coming in like this huge, it's almost like um, like a Humvee of some, like an armored truck is coming in to the area. You all see this. And as soon as it's coming in, you hear everyone up above beginning to panic. Uh, weapons are being drawn. And as the truck comes in and pulls sideways, you see the, the Aries symbol on the side of the truck. You're not the only ones here for this mutagen. Motherfucker. Inside, 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 we gotta go. Close the door. <laughs> Wait, yep. bolt, break the, can we break the door? Like, can you just- Yeah, it? can Can I like z- put my finger on the thing and zap it so it won't work anymore? You absolutely can. You step in, close the door, that like electronic surge passes through and the electronic locks break. <laughs> you test the point. door and it's not gonna open. Nice. And you hear the arguing. Deal with. Yeah, you hear the arguing happening, like, towards near the bottom of the stairs. I'm trying to set the fucking alarm. What are you doing? Well, obviously, you're not one of mine, or you have some more fucking respect. That is what you hear as you are stepping in here. Fuck. Wait, are y'all making a lot of noise? Now we are. <laughs> yeah. Does he look over to see who's coming up behind us? Uh, yeah, sure. 
Yeah, I want to hit him with the back of my gun and try to knock him out. <laughs> nice. Beautiful. Beautiful. Let's make that roll. I'm going to spend a Benny. All right. <laughs> Ooh, that's a six. Okay. Um, I'm going to say just because it's fun, I won't even have you roll any damage for that. I think you slam the gun into the side of his head. He collapses, and as he does so, whatever... Um, whatever was keeping his false appearance changes. And you see instead, you see um, leopard print fur. Mm -hmm. uh, you see a cat face armor with the Ares symbol on uh, on the chest of it, unconscious, laying there before you. Oh, good kitty. <laughs> Y'all, I think we've been scooped. That's why I wanted to know who we worked for. I was wondering why it mattered. Huh. At this point, you hear, what is going on up there? Ares is here. Oh, fuck. And then you, there's everyone's just kind of scooting around, and then you hear, blah, like alarms starting outside, as if the people outside don't know. But um, the alarms are blaring now, and you can see uh, people are rushing around to try to hide things. I think I grab the back of, of the, his jacket that he's wearing and I just drag his unconscious body out and I kind of like toss it in front of us. Hey, somebody come get this shit. I don't take out the trash. What the fuck? Look at this. Yeah, you see two of the guards coming up and grabbing onto him, like patting him down, dragging him over to bring him towards like a cell of some sort. Um, and now that you're down here, you do see this is like one giant lab of a bunker you see lab tables everywhere you see equipment that you don't even know what the fuck it would do um you see those very very large uh test tubes with like bodies inside of them of various creature types um full of like this green liquid some's full of like this yellow liquid blue liquid uh this place is a lot larger than the base up top they, they've got a they've got a whole truck coming up Whole bunch of whole bunch of soldiers. Um, Y'all better send a good chunk of people up that way to deal with them. I I've managed to make it to, hard for them to get in the door, but they're gonna find a way to burst in one way or another. Uh, you see people rushing around, mostly mostly scientists down here. Havoc, I need you to roll a d6 for me. Just a just a d6. Just a d6. Okay. A, a two. A two. Unfortunately, there are no buff scientists down here. <laughs> Damn! I should have used a Betty. <laughs> maybe Ares has buff scientists in their truck. Maybe, maybe. maybe. No buff scientists down here. That's Damn. the first thing that you notice that you're scanning and you're like, fuck. Uh, yeah. looking you just watch there. like Havoc's shoulders just sort of droop and he just looks around and he goes, oh, I'm not going to be able to eat nothing but like poster strudels for the next three months. Don't worry, I got you, buddy. Thanks. I'm good. Pat, Pat. People are rushing around. You see some of the soldiers, like, moving towards the door, but then once you say, you know, I made it harder for them to come down, um, a couple of them stay to, like, guard this door, but you see some of them moving off, probably towards another entrance exit area. Do I, I'm going to glance around, do I see any others that seem to be going in another direction or see any sign of something that would be like a high security sort of place? Like where, looking around, do I have any idea where I might go to figure out where this mutagen is? I think, um, I think you see, most of this is all open but you see one area of labs that are like all thick glass walls all the way around them. It, it appears airtight, like there's like a um, a uh, decontamination chamber to get even into and out of this area. All glass, no like um, other doorways or anything at all. And I think that you peg that as like, that's the best option. Okay, okay. Um, the... The guy that we just the, the the little Aries kitty that we just knocked out. Do I see his key card on him? Uh, you do. I'm gonna grab that. Okay, and as you grab it too, you do notice it is a rectorate key card that he had snagged from someone else. I like hold it up in between two fingers. I think I got us an in. 
think uh, Phoenix is kind of looking around, trying to see where those other soldiers went, just so we know we have our bases covered on exit strategy. Yeah. Um, you see, like, the opposite side of the room than the door that you had come in. There are more stairs leading up um, to some other doorway. Okay. Spectre is going to look around as kind of this chaos is going on. Is there any one, like maybe singular or two or three scientists who are kind of taking charge of kind of wrapping everything up and trying to gather all the information before they leave? Go ahead and make a notice roll. Okay. My notice is great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can I, can I support, um, by rolling my focus to unite us all in a switchboard. Yeah, absolutely. That way everything, like we can kind of like crowd crowdsource together our um, our knowledge of this area. Yeah, roll that focus. That is, oh, I wanted to get a higher one so I could give you a plus two, but I only got a four. That's okay. Plus one, plus one still. That's a, that's a six total. Okay. Um, as you're glancing around, Spectre, you, it's, it's almost like slowly sinking in as you are looking around at all of these scientists. This is a false panic. You aren't seeing them actually packing anything up. Uh, you aren't seeing them actually really standing guard and... I will say with the help of Phoenix's like almost like telepathic uh, ability to see into minds, all of these people are Aries. Go on the subcutaneous comms and say, I think we're already fucked. <laughs> Everyone's Aries. Phoenix just starts moving toward the staircase in an authoritative way, like, excuse me, watch out. I'm needed somewhere else on the base. I look around, trying to just, like, get people to follow them. <laughs> like, here we go. All right, all right. Um, <laughs> and as you are doing that, you see the, uh, the decontamination door open, and you see a scientist walking out uh, with a case. Um... And they are just like, we've got we've got to get this out of here before before Ares gets in. And they walk over towards the other staircase. <laughs> Gonna follow them. Be like, make sure to guard your exit. Take out my assault rifle. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll follow suit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so as you are pushing through, all of you kind of going up these stairs. Um, uh, Phoenix, do you get to the door first, or do you let one of them kind of get to the door first? I think I get to the door first, um, thinking that they would need more support from behind in case any of these Aries people got suspicious. Sure. Um, I think uh, Bolt probably, like, passes you that key card, and as you get up there, you just scan the card, the door unlocks, opens up, and the, the scientist is kind of hugging this case, and... Um, you all exit. So whenever we exit, is it taking us outside where the truck is? As you are looking, it is taking you outside of the walls. Um, the truck is not in view, though. Okay. Is, is there a way for us to close it once we're on the other side? Like, close this door? Uh, like, could, could Bolt, like, ruin the mechanics of it again? Yeah, I, th I think so. I, I would say the group of them that are coming out with you would still come out with you, but it would close the other Ares soldiers and scientists down below. Oh. Mm -hmm. Can I be at the very end of this? Sure. Sure. So I will say, I will roll. Um, okay, so um, there are three Ares guards and the scientists stepping out with you in this group. But you can close off the 
other nine or so down below if you'd like. Yeah. Yep. Cool. I'll, so, like, stand next to the door as they're all coming out, and as soon as it's done, slam the door and zap, ha zap. Havoc, did you have something specific? No, I'm not gonna do it. Are you sure? Don't tempt me. Maybe you should do it. I think you should do we it. We all want you to do it. Do right, it. Before, <laughs> before Bolt closes it, um, I'm just gonna grab my grenade launcher and launch a grenade at the bottom of the <laughs> stairs. <laughs> So you step yeah. through and you're like, all right, one sec, and you just turn and dunk. <laughs> oh. It is one of the incendiary grenades, so it is beautiful. Going to just, yeah, fuck some shit. Dunk. Up, Before that even hits, the door is slammed, and as this electric bolt like goes at these maglocks, you hear the incendiary grenade <laughs> just go off inside. Uh, there's a little bit of force against the door as well. Uh, and at that. Um, the Ares soldiers posing as directorate soldiers um, realize kind of what's happening here and we are going to draw action cards once again to see how this Sorry. escape plays out. I love this. As we go into Perfect. combat, Phoenix is just like, you know, scientist, uh, there's uh, there's some Ares people up in there. So, you know, don't, don't mind the, the bloodshed. They're all bad guys, and we're going to keep you safe, aren't we? <laughs> and I look at the other agents. <laughs> aren't we? Um, Got to protect that payload you got there. Bolt, you're at oh. a five. Or a two. Mirrored, you know. <laughs> uh, Spectre. Jack. Damn. My cards are always really nice to new players at my table like Thanks it's card. it's a thing it has been happening okay sure. phoenix is this whole deck queens and jacks yep i swear i shuffle uh and havoc yes benny is for everyone <laughs> everybody gets a benny so you all get a benny back sweet and you're at plus two kaz so you can do multiple things in your turn if you want at no penalty i can Ooh, yeah. Yes. So when you get a Joker, you get plus two to your, all of your to like all your rolls and stuff. Okay. Which means if you wanted norm, normally, if you did two actions in one turn, so if you wanted to like hit two people or fire two grenade launchers yeah. or whatever, um, you'd be at negative two to both. But because you have a plus two, you can basically ignore those penalties and do two I actions love for that. free. Boom. Cool. And Joker is the best. Yes. Me. Oh, I get Boo! a two. So the other thing about the Joker is you can go whenever you want. You can choose to oh, go first. Yeah. You can choose to interrupt another person's turn. The Joker can go literally whenever. Um, so you can even like hear what someone else wants to do and then be like, ah, no, I'm going to go. You can interrupt at any point in time. Okay. So that being Good. said, uh, I would go first unless you have something you want to do for first or do you want to hear what everyone else is doing? I'll wait to see what happens. This was literally this. chaos grenade. Doof. Uh, <laughs> is what this was. Yeah. Uh, I'll wait. Um, and I'll sort of like innocently turn around and just be like, "Sorry, y'all. I'm just ha had a really bad burrito. That's just why that happened back there." <laughs> Light a match. All of these other, like you know, directorate people that came out as soon as this grenade is fired they seem to realize that the ruse is up and you see them all slam something on their chests and their um fake appearance glitches away and you see standing before you four leopard printed people standing cat face they don't have masks on or anything and you see they have different armor than uh what you had seen with the director at scientists you see um actual like different weapons strapped to them they're still carrying like the directorate weapons because that's it wasn't a part of their costume um but you can see uh claws as well they have like fingerless gloves and the claws themselves are very, very sharp. And you see them, like, almost, like, extend them as they are looking over at you. And I am going... Let's see, there's four of them. One of them is holding on to the case, though. 
So the other three are going to immediately um, attack three Damn of it, you. Damn it, the scientist isn't on it too? Yep. Come on! Oh, that badge isn't working. <laughs> 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 Trying! <laughs> I'll be like, oh wait, can I can I just go? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I'll be like, oh my badge is working, and I will try and shift into my wolf form. Amazing. What does that look like? Um, it just sort of like I just drop, I throw the like grenade uh launcher down, and I just like launch forward, and you just watch like my clothes just rip off my body, and there's just just this giant like black like wolf on like two legs in front of everyone. It's very like large and hulking. Fantastic. I just snarl at them. Would you like to take your actions? Um, yeah, I'll uh, do a, a bite um, on the one one of the leopards closest to me. Cool. Um, I think you see one lunging forward to uh, go after Bolt. Okay. I will I will um, fight that one first then. Cool. Mm -hmm. Ooh, my six exploded. I don't know. Great though. Seven. And Ooh. what is your claw damage? That would be an eight total damage. Yes. Okay. So you go to bite down at the one that is kind of like not quite lunging towards Bolt, but you see they are also on like two legs as well. And they mm. take two strides forward and are like reaching up to slash over at Bolt. And uh, you lunge over. Where were you wanting to bite? Um, can I grab at the scruff of their neck and just like psh, like pull them back with my like front force. Yeah, you go to bite, you bite down, you feel your teeth like sink through and then an elbow comes back and slams into the side of your head. Oh. Uh, okay. Kind of like you, you scratch, you scrape um, and you do not have a hold of them and they turn towards you instead. It is now, um, there go. And turning towards you, they snarl. You hear just this deep, deep snarl in their chest as they are looking at you. And uh, they are going to uh, slash you with their claws. Uh, what is your parry? Um, it is five. Beautiful. So you try to bite onto them. They push you away, are now facing you. As they go to slice, you just reach up with your own claws and like, stop them and their claws are now just like piercing trying to push closer to your face but they don't quite get you um as for the other three one scientist or the, the one with the case itself uh you see is going to run away uh they are beginning to sprint in the other direction while the other two are kind of stepping in front and going after uh specter and phoenix so i'm gonna claw try to claw attack both of you Oh my god. They yeah, both keep miss. Poor. <laughs> um they both miss and the one attacking Phoenix got a critical failure, which means in my games I love to reward the opposite side with uh something whenever one person gets critical failure. So Phoenix, you're going to tell me what this critical failure looks like, but as they both have blocked um, you do see the other one sprinting away fast. They are, I mean, they kind of like tuck the case and they even almost go like four, like three-legged kind of as they are sprinting away, kind of football tucking uh, the case as they are running. The other two both lunge forward. One of them um, goes to Spectre. Spectre, how do you block their attack? I think um, because I have uh, salt out currently, I just deflect with the gun and uh, say, same side, same side. <laughs> just lock the attack. Beautiful. Um, and then Phoenix, as one is lunging towards you, what happens? I think uh, they're trying to get at me, um, and I throw up kind of like an illusion in front of myself, um, where I look like one of their friends. So they just see this like hulking, like leopard Neotherian throat standing there. Like, what are you doing, man? And they get tripped up and like just kind of fall backwards. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, I, I think there was, like, a, a heavy enough swing towards you that as you kind of, like, put up this illusion, uh, maybe it it took, like, a wave of the hand or something, and you kind of used that to grab mm -hmm. onto the arm as well. Like, hey, hey, like, we're we're good, we're good. And there's this moment of confusion and just staring at you for a moment. Um, and it is your turn, Phoenix. 
think like I let go of the arm and just kind of move off to to kind of look around. So I have mind control. Um I would like to do some mind control on this creature that has the box and see if I can get them to come back. So I'll roll my focus. That's a seven. So that is a success. And I have to roll a what? You have to roll a spirit roll. Perfect. I got a nine. I think there's this moment too where you're like recognizing this being running away. You are seeing kind of this um, almost like aura coming off of them. It's almost like this just red, um, not quite smoke, mm-hmm. but just these this kind of red vibe to them as they are running away. Um, you imagine something about them is boosted as they are sprinting away from this area. I think my attention kind of like goes back to the team and I just kind of say into like our, our like comm, like our general comm with it, with, um, with our boss as well. And I let Sharma know that this person is like on the loose and I give a description before turning back to the fight in front of us. Perfect. All right. Um, Spectre, you're up. If possible. Um, Spectre would like, kind of taking that attack as they kind of block with the weapon, they would like to almost like drop prone as they're kind of hit, but then pull up the weapon and kind of shoot through that person's legs towards the person running. Hell yeah. I love that. Let's do it. Heck yeah. So um, I'm going to use my, because this is a, uh, it has three burst um, rounds, so I have a plus two to hit and damage, and I'm rolling a d10. That's a crit fail. No! no! Second one of the night. Incredible. (laughs) I, yep, this this is great. I think as soon as you drop down, like you you move down to go prone uh, and you kind of bring the gun down between this being's legs that had just tried slashing at you, but they're just, you see them em- like emitting this red aura as well. And as soon as you drop down, they just reach down, grab onto your clothes from like your back, pick you up and then throw you and you are slammed up against the uh, the bunker door itself, fall down. The gun is left between his legs as he throws you over. We'll see if I explode on, I don't. So you're not gonna take any damage or anything for that, but the breath is knocked out of you as you are slammed into this, slammed down. Cigarette flies out of the mouth. <laughs> Right, I deserve that. <laughs> Bolt. You're I, can can I still see the person that was running? They are making quick distance, but yes, you can still see them. Okay, I'm gonna take off and I am going to as I'm running as fast as I can, try to hit them with a lightning bolt. I'm gonna fling my arm out and send out a lightning strike in their general direction. All right, give it a go. Okay. Ooh, yes, eight on my D8 for my focus die. Awesome. So again. That is 10 total. Okay, all right. Uh, all right. So roll damage for that. All right. That is 10 damage because it's 3D6. Yes. Okay, so how this works with me, because I ignore Shaken, Hitting the toughness automatically gives a wound instead of shaken. Okay. This person's toughness is 10. So that will be enough to grant one wound against this person. Uh, I am going to spend a Benny to try to roll to soak it. Oh, I rolled an, I rolled an eight on my D10 and I rolled a six on my D6. So let's... No! I rolled a 10 total. Shit! Okay, okay. Sounds. So as, as this lightning bolt arcs out, you see it slam like into its back. 
you see as it takes this slam, it goes into a roll, rolls like two times, stands back up and is immediately back in a running form again. You see singed fur on one side. And that is one round. Mm -hmm. So now we draw some more action cards to see how the next round goes. We have Bolt. There's nothing on this card. That was confusing. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> that was very confusing. I'm glad we got that confusion on camera. Um, <laughs> let me try that again. We have Bolt with an eight. We have Spectre with an ace. Ooh. We have uh, Phoenix. With a king, what the fuck? Yes. What the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we have Havoc with a five. That's better. Do you want to spin to Benny to redraw yeah, this? I do. Yeah. Nine. Huh. And me? A nine as well. Very first would be Spectre. Uh, we know that of me. Well, that's why I bring more than one gun and swing around that tactical um, loop there, pulling up my sniper rifle instead. And I'll kind of, since I'm sitting anyway, just kind of slumped against this wall. It's like, right, and just I'll take aim um, and try to, again, shoot this runner. All right, go for it. Okay. This one does not have three round bursts, unfortunately. But that's okay. That is uh, a. Seven. Okay. Uh, roll damage. Okay. So for the damage, it's pretty hefty. So it's two d eight plus an extra d six because I have dead eye. Ooh. That is going to be seven, eight, thirteen damage altogether. Okay. Um, so you see, where would you like to shoot? I'd like to shoot in the calf. Okay. Um, um so you, you, yeah, you see sprinting almost out of range, uh, you fire, you aren't sure if you hit at first, but then you see a little roll once again, stand up and they are, they're still running. Um, uh, but you did manage to get a wound on, on him. Um, you see now instead of running on like, three legs they are standing back up and just running on two kind of like nursing that one calf or you know that one leg uh to his body as he's continuing to run forward i know everybody can handle themselves and i definitely have this hk psg1 so i think i'm gonna try and take another shot at the runner if i can i'm gonna spend a benny a five Okay. To shoot. All right, that is a success. So, just barely. I mean, yeah. Gross. Gross. See what we got going on for Nine damage. Nine points of damage. Oh, ten points of damage. Okay. Okay. Uh, that just does it then. Um, slamming. You want to hit. You want to slow him down. So you want to hit in the leg as well. Yeah. All right, so ooh, slammed into the other leg. They roll. You see them stand up, fall down again, stand up. Like you have, you have definitely hit them in the leg, and it has slowed them tremendously. Um, okay. I think I kind of, I, I kind of shout that out to everybody else that's fighting because I'm sure that other people's attention or you know is kind of elsewhere. Um, and if no one is standing near me, I'll start to kind of back away to make my way okay. toward that guy. Okay. Um, I'll just attack. Uh, the person in front of me right now. Um, Perfect. Which, they are a, a Neo Theron, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Yeah. They aren't like a Chimera. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. I was just curious. Um, what do I want to do? Just do another bite into this son of a bitch, I guess. All right. Just a five, so, yeah. Yeah, as you go to bite, they, they are still holding weapons. We'll say this one has like a pistol in mm -hmm. their hand and as you go to bite just boom, shoves the pistol itself it. into your mouth and you just Ugh. crunch down on it can i try like with it in my mouth just like try and like just like just get it out of this person's arms and just like just yank it 
Sure, I'd say you can. You just okay. you just rip it away cool. and just yeah. fling it. Yeah, I do. Perfect, yeah. perfect. Um, and at this point, you all hear the crashing of the fence uh, a little ways beside you as the Ares truck is just boosh, just barreling out of the uh, base itself and just speeding out towards uh, the one that is running away. Um, the truck is just going as fast as it can. You hear the engine revving as the Humvee is just pulling through. And let me make a roll for this. Uh, you are watching as the truck is going by, limping, limping, jumps up onto the side of the truck, and you see immediately the truck drift and beginning to drive off somewhere else. And uh, with that... Let's see, the one in front of Havoc is going to, uh, the one that you have just, like, flung the gun away from is going to attempt to claw attack you. And do you think I would remember what that is? Aha, okay. Oh my fucking, I rolled a critical failure again. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> Yay. So, um... Yeah, Havoc, what does this look like? As you've just ripped the gun from his hands, he uses, like, that momentum to then fling towards you with a claw attack. What does that um, look like? I think I'm literally just, like, gonna use one of my, like, paws and just, like, reach up and grab that, like, arm, and then I'm just gonna yank him really close towards me, like, with that, like, momentum, basically. Amazing. Amazing. Love that. Yeah. Um... Let's see, the one that was in front of Phoenix, like, as- Phoenix, you've taken a shot towards an ally of- of his, actually. So he kind of is, like, catching on to what's going on here, immediately looks over to you, and is going to actually, like, raise up the rifle strapped to him, and fire. I have a thing. You have a thing. Uh, negative two to be hit by ranged attacks. Motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> it's going well, so fast. Well, Candace, a negative two will make me miss. So, <laughs> I love it. I love it. I do a little cartwheel out of the way. You hear the the bullet slam into uh, the wall of the bunker door itself, and uh, kind of turns to kind of bring the gun back over to you. Suddenly, now just like very intimidated about what is going on here, taking a couple steps away, trying to get a better uh, beat on you, and. Um, I look down realizing that I don't look like that my illusion is dropped. I'm like, oh, <laughs> hi. <Sorry. laughs> Amazing. Uh, and uh, Bolt. Do I think that I can fry something about the, the truck to make it stop? Yeah. Or is that... I mean... You could... You could definitely fry some of the systems, um, but it would not stop the truck. Okay, okay. It might stop certain things that the truck can do. Ethan, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna try and fuck with this truck a bit, but, but we need some help. Whatever you whatever toy you that you don't want us to play with, I think it's a I think it's time for you to put on a little show. And I'm going to do my electromagnetic pulse. Um, towards the truck as I'm still running in its general direction to try and see if I can fry some of the sim systems for it. And okay. See uh, how so that you works. will, yeah, you will roll your focus. You hear, you all hear over the comms as Ethan replies back. He is shouting over the sound of the engine as the truck is just hauling ass, and he's just he's, he's just saying flare, 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 and um, <laughs> that is a four. Okay. Um. Yeah. So. I'm going to say, even though this is not how electricity works, I think it would look cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, you shoot a flare up into the air, drop the flare gun, we see electricity like take over your arm, and then you go down and just punch into the ground. And you see this like bolt snake through the ground itself up to the truck. You see the whole truck just engulfed in this electricity. You see things popping. Um, something happened. <laughs> All right, next round. I don't know what I just did, but I did something. Let's go. Bolt with a six. Shit. Spectre with a two. This, or five. Motherfucker. Oh, the damn. mirror is getting me. The mirror is getting me. Uh, 
Phoenix. God damn it. Why? Why? Why is this happening? Nice. Um, Havoc. Like, it's bad that this is the worst card pull you guys have had so far. This one. How? Um, I think it's great. And me. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can spend a Benny if you aren't. No, I'm, out, I'm out of Bennies. Yes. I'm out of Bennies. Oh, no. Ooh. You are? Yeah. Oh, oh, no. oh tragic. Oh, no. no one didn't use them too wisely, I guess. Womp, womp. <laughs> Too much betting on buff scientists. Oh, You're yeah. lucky I like you guys. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, okay, so that means first up is actually Phoenix. I forgot to uh, draw Ethan into the equation, so uh, I will pop him in at a surprise time. Uh, Phoenix, you are at first. Um, what's going on with this truck? What do I see? The truck is driving the fuck away. Still? Um, yes. The truck has picked up the person with the case and instead of like going straight away from you is now like straight and to the right. Like getting the fuck out of here. You imagine moving toward like you just came here. So you imagine they're moving towards the road for better and faster travel. What kind of negatives am I at if I shoot for their fuel? Ooh, um, being generous, it would be at a negative four. Yeah, I'm going to take the shot. I don't care. All right. Uh, I'm going to try it and see what happens, which is not a success. I'm spending my last Benny. I'm doing it. I believe in these die. No, oh. don't. They said no. I got no. It. All right, fire. I and think, you just I hear- I think I take the shot and I just miss. It just goes wide. Yeah, you just hear the echo. I kind of stand up really dejected and shoot my flare like haphazardly, like blech, whatever, fuck. And I get into the comm. Uh. Sorry, boss. I don't know that we're getting this one today. And you hear, it's not over yet! And you, you're you realizing you hear that in, like, not in your comms. It's actually happening. And the truck is, like, pulling up, skidding to a stop, like, right in front of you. As the truck is, like, drifting over in the sand, slams into one of the enemies that was uh, in front of Phoenix. Boom, just completely slams into that enemy, knocks them over. And you see the moment the truck is... It's not even, like, stopped yet. You see Ethan climbing up out of the uh, window itself, jumping into the back and pulling off this tarp, and you see uh, motorbikes. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And he's immediately just beginning to, like, shove them off towards you um, to get going. And that is Ethan's turn. Uh, we now go to Havoc. If I used all four legs... <laughs> Could I run after said vehicle? <laughs> I would say your your sprinting could definitely be as fast as these motorbikes. Cool. Because that's cool. Cool. Um, then for my turn, um, I guess I still have this per this like leopard person sort of grabbed. Can I like sort of like? Let them, like, shove them away, let them go, and then start breaking off into a full sprint towards the vehicle. Yeah, sure. Cool. All right, I'm going to do Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, you just kind of shove them over and then just whoosh, just take off yeah. sprinting. Cool. I'll do a couple barks on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to grab, climb on one of the motorbikes and start driving in that general direction. The area around is pretty just sandy and, and mostly dirt. Not many trees, at least not close by. Okay. Um, then instead, I'm going to use my lightning strike to strike kind of like the front of the truck and at very least try to use that. If it doesn't do anything to the truck itself, at the very least, I'm trying to like blind the driver to where they can't see to keep driving. Speeding towards uh, this Humvee. You are close enough. You reach up your hand, strike down with a lightning bolt. What does that roll? Um, it, I got an eight on my focus die, so to roll that again, plus six, 14. Let's have you roll damage. Seven. <laughs> okay, so yeah, you strike down with this lightning bolt. You see it slam down like onto the hood of the car. Um, and that's all you can make out currently, but, but you have done that. Um, as you are just still speeding to try to catch up to the vehicle itself. And for their turn, um, 
you see the vehicle itself, especially you, Bolt, you see the vehicle itself kind of going like this for a moment and then veering off in one direction and, and it just continues to veer. The thing is though, is it's not um, losing speed. Whatever happened to the driver, all pressure is on the gas pedal now at this point. So it's veering and it's veering fucking quickly. Um, and that's where we're at with that. Uh, the few people that are left over here with your group, I am going to roll a d6. And this is going to decide whether they are noping out and heading back over to allies or if they are going to continue to fight you. A 1, 2, or 3, they are still fighting you. A 4, 5, or 6, they're noping out. That is a 6. So you see them immediately, like, seeing what's happening, seeing that the vehicle is getting further away, but then also seeing that it's starting to lose control. They kind of like glance at each other and they're all going to sprint to head towards the hole in the fence that the vehicle made to try to get back in and regroup with some allies so that is what they are moving to do um and that is that round of combat oh i think i still need to go for the round oh shit that's okay <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah that was the card that i was sitting here playing with and then oh. i was like i can put it away it's fine um yes the specter oh, okay. you are up so with this truck veering and everything, do I still see um, the uh, the fear and throat that's kind of like still hanging on um, to the side? They appear to have climbed into the vehicle Damn. at this point. Hmm. Okay, I think Spectre rolls forward kind of because they were just like sitting against the bunker and she rolls forward scooping up uh, salt and I think with quick motions, we'll kind of jump onto one of these motorcycles and just start tearing ass out of here. Perfect. Yeah, I think we kind of see um, Bolt change uh, directions to go after this now swerving vehicle. And then we see as you change directions, Spectre comes up directly beside you and, and the two of you are heading off towards this vehicle. Beautiful. Okay. Um, and then you just hear the sound of uh, paws slamming into earth as you see on the other side of Bolt, uh, Havoc is sprinting up um, and the three of you are moving towards this vehicle. Um, all right, next round, we have Bolt with a queen. These hate me, this game hates me. It's yeah. like, we're done. We actually would like to be done. Um, <laughs> we have Spectre. What the fuck? <laughs> I swear, if one of these is a joker, um, we have Phoenix. What? <laughs> I quit. I'm out of here. <laughs> and Havoc with an eight. I'm going to spend a penny. Okay. All right. Six. Uh, Jesus. All right. Five. I'll let you take the eight, though, because right. I'm nice. Thank um, you. And I take back any like grievances I had against you in this game. <laughs> take back making fun of your low rolls. All right, now I'm going to draw for Ethan uh, with a six. Meh. And the enemies. Ooh, you're doing nice. great, Carrie. Wow. Doing so good. We're so proud of you. <gasps> okay. Uh, so first up. <laughs> First up would be Spectre. Uh, Joker can go whenever you would like. Can I start to move? Yeah. And then hold. Sure. You want to catch up? And I'm, I'm going. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Uh, we see we see Phoenix come up and complete this like row of four the four of you as you are just speeding towards this vehicle. Um, awesome. Yeah. So Spectre. Um... Do these motorcycles have accommodations for potentially two people on them? Uh, you want them to? Yes. Then yes. <laughs> okay. So, seeing Bolt beside me, I'm gonna look over and say, "Make room!" And I want to hop off my bike and hop onto hers and basically pull up like the scope again. All right. Hell yeah. All right. Um, you are driving very quickly, so this will require a roll. Um, <laughs> is there a way that I can assist by, like, um, I'll, I'd like to, like, kind of get my bike as close as possible and 
try and drive at an even pace, do anything I can to make it a steady, easy jump over. Okay. Do you have anything in driving? I do! <laughs> Great. Roll That's that. awesome. Cool. Five. Did you roll 2d6? Because you yes. roll that wild die? Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, so that will be a plus one to Spectre's roll. Spectre, what are you rolling? Is this, are you doing athletics for this? Yeah, I'm going to do athletics. Cool. You have a plus one. Okay. Do not crit fail. I swear to God. I didn't. Woohoo. <laughs> that is going to be, that is uh, 15 altogether. Okay. Yeah, so you see um, Spectre basically put like, bring a foot up onto kind of the, the handlebars and then use the other foot to stand up onto their seat uh, and quickly just jump over onto bolts. Um, kind of leaning down still, not fully sitting, um, but more kind of securing themselves uh, against bolts, if you're okay with that. Yeah. Um, and kind of holding the sniper rifle. And you see their motorcycle just start like speed wobbling as it loses speed and careens over. And there's like a single tree amongst the sand, crashes into it and just explodes. And I think cinematically out of that explosion, we see it like you know it explode off and then we see uh uh we see ethan push through the smoke and he's like what the and he's, he's like freaking out about what just happened there and uh almost loses it but doesn't um a little ways behind you still um i am going to shit i'm i'm more helpful close up um i guess i'm gonna just drive as fast as i can um i'm gonna pull one of the grenades out of my pocket Use my, like, holding on to the, um, hold on to the handlebars with one hand. Grab the grenade, pull the pin with my teeth, and throw it trying to get it, like, in front of the truck to where they would go under it, I think. Okay. Or it would go under it. Is that... Ten! <laughs> Good. It's like, now is really not the time for a <laughs> failure. <laughs> or we're done. Uh, no, um... It's the end of the game. Yeah, so you chuck this grenade. You probably, um kind of veer off a little bit, gain some more ground on the truck itself and throw this kind of almost at an angle to get it to arc just before the vehicle. And it doesn't quite hit like right before it, but you see it clink against the hood of the vehicle itself. Um, do you have grenade damage written down? HE grenades, so a damage 3d6. Is yeah, roll that please. All right, um, 11. Okay. So you see, this is still just veering, uh, but as soon as this explodes, you see, uh, you kind of hear like the metal itself dent in and you hear the windshield shatter inward. And um, upon this explosion, you see it's still kind of like veering a little bit, but uh, the speed is starting to decrease. If it's like losing speed, is there a way I can sort of catch and run parallel with it? Um. I think if you succeed on like an athletics roll, you can absolutely get up to it. Okay. That won't count as your action. Okay, let me see. Uh, <laughs> with six plus five is 11? Yeah, 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 then you can absolutely like just push forward cool. and is get up parallel. The windows to the door are the like, is one of the windows open? Like, All of the windows back. are blown out now. Oh, cool. Oh, so, oh, that's right. Okay. I'm just going to launch myself through one of those windows. <laughs> I don't care if it's small, I'll force myself in. Oh, fucking amazing. All right. <laughs> Visual, little Pete's little kicking Pete. out the window. Yeah. All right. Make, <laughs> make, that athletics. make another athletics roll. Cool, cool, cool. Oh. Can uh, someone five. get some fan art of this werewolf on a motorbike? <laughs> Please. <Not a> werewolf, <laughs> but... <laughs> so, sprinting, you the rest of you see clearly uh, Havoc sprinting, catching up to this vehicle, and then boom, just launching off of the ground and slamming into one of the windows itself. Uh, front legs, like, fr front legs, front arms, and, like, basically almost half of the torso are inside. Cool. You are holding on. The rest of you is like dangling out at this point. And as you're looking in, you are seeing that the driver is dead. The passenger uh, soldier is dead. Um, 
One seems to have happened from electricity. One seems to have happened from a grenade. Both happened from Bolt. And you're like, of course. Um, and there's one other person in this vehicle. It is the person that is hugging the yeah. mutagen uh, case to their chest. And as you slam into this window, they back up against the other window. And their eyes are so wide, like... A lot has happened in the past 30 seconds, and you can just see them, like, backing up and, like, looking at you in fear. Um, in a very, like, deep voice. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Incredible. And Tail so you're wagging. just, yeah, you're just hanging out, like, literally. Um, and... Have I been this, able to get close? Um... Do you want to get, like, up to it? I'd probably want to go on the other side from where... Um, Havoc is. Beautiful. Yeah, I'd say you can absolutely do that, and, like, as you, uh, I assume we're taking your turn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, as I kind of ride up, I open the door. (laughs) (laughs) That dude is leaning against. I want to, what I want to do is open the door, have him fall out, and then kind of swerve my bike so that I can, like, let the, let the truck kind of run its course and corner this person. So I don't know if that would be an athletics role to do that, or... I think because you're moving at, like, a a high speed and trying to do something specific, like open the door, how does an agility roll sound? Sure. For that, okay. Both die exploded. Where's this been all session? (laughs) Not with me. Uh, (laughs) A nine? Okay. All right, so what we're going to do, you open up this door. I'm going to make an agility roll for him to see if he is even able to stop, like, catch himself at all. Knowing my dice, probably not going to happen. Let's see. Agility is a d12, so there is a chance. He's also very scared, though, Carrie. He's frightened, and he both is. his hands are holding on to this thing. This is very true. So I'm going to give him... I'm going to give him a negative two penalty to this. Okay, I got an eight on both die. Makes that a six with the negative two penalty. The door opens and he is beginning to fall out. You see with one hand, he reaches out, grabs onto basically like the seatbelt of uh, this vehicle, holding onto the seatbelt. The other hand has the case and is like, fl- like he's hanging out of this vehicle now at this point as you have opened the door, holding on for dear life. I let you have your first action normal. Okay. And I only put the penalty on the second action. Oh my goodness, so generous. I mean, <laughs> ridiculous. <laughs> All right, so then then my second action would be at a, like a straight roll then? Yes. Okay, so I'd like to grapple. I want to grab that from him. Grab that case, okay. Yeah. 14. Five. Uh, so yeah, t- <laughs> tell me what this looks like. So he's like... It's really funny because the whole time I'm just imagining the chunky leopard from Zootopia that has the fat cheeks that eats all the donuts. Like that's all that's all I'm thinking of in this moment. Uh, so he's like, what are we gonna do? And um, I'm up next to him on my bike and I've like opened the door and I'm like waiting for him to just fall out and he doesn't. So as he kind of goes wide with his arms and the the mutagen kind of like extends out of his reach, like I just swoop up and I just cop it like right under my elbow and just like try to twist the bike to double back around to head back with the team. Amazing. Um, Yeah, and as you do so, uh, as you are twisting around, you are able to get a glance at what's happening behind everyone. And you can see like six or seven of these Aries people sprinting on all fours following these bikes. Um, and as you as you spin to see this, you see Ethan is a good distance behind you all. Uh, and once Ethan sees you have the case, he immediately skids to go sideways. Um, and you see him um, pulling the shotgun from his back. And as he as he skids, he takes both hands off of uh, the the handlebars and just doom, doom, just begins firing at all of these leopards that are following. The bike itself turns and he puts the shotgun back, grabs onto the handlebars and continues following you. You know what? I'm gonna say that you have the case. Uh, There are no drivers in the vehicle up above you. So I would like, I would like all of you to tell me what does everyone want to do kind of as a group 
um, to get away from all of these people. I think that Spectre, kind of still propped up on the seat, kind of does a little like jump and spin. So now they're backwards and facing towards the Ares people. And as Bolt's uh, just driving is just firing the sniper rifle as they're running. I think Phoenix is just kind of in the lead, going as fast as possible. Um, and I think I throw up an illusion of, uh, like, because I know there's like kind of walls to this area and then there's like a place where you can kind of drive through. So I just complete the wall and let everybody know um, through comms, just like, hey, it's an illusion, just keep going. And like, I think they probably see me go through it or maybe it comes up like right after I get out of the way. Um, so that by the time they get there, hopefully they are fooled and think they can't go further. Okay. I'm going to um, try and push myself entirely into this truck. And then I am going to launch myself at this scientist, like, like, foe launch myself at this scientist to scare him out of the vehicle so that he <laughs> just, like, drops. Um, but, like, actually, like, I'm just, like, launching myself through, like, the other side of the open door and, like, running um, after everybody, if I can. Fantastic. Since I know Spectre is shooting, facing the opposite direction of me, I am going to focus on driving as fast as possible. Um, get the fuck out of here. And I suppose if anybody seemed like they were catching up to us, then I'd try to hit them with the zap. But if no one's catching up to us, then I'm just going to keep going. Okay. Keep going straight. Uh, in this case, I would like for Bolt to roll drive. I would like for Phoenix to roll um, focus. I would like for Havoc to roll probably athletics or fighting, your choice. Um, and I would like for Spectre to roll uh, shooting. Got a four. I also got a four. And I got a nine. In this moment, all of you still kind of over by this Humvee. Um, Havoc leaps through. Uh, you hear the, the other person like, scream a little bit, drop down, like, let go of the seatbelt, fall. It's lost enough speed to where it's not like falling to your death or anything, just falls and rolls and kind of rolls and rolls and rolls in the sand. And Havoc leaps out on the other side, and as soon as he hits the ground, he's just pushing off and sprinting towards where he sees Phoenix uh, speeding off towards. Uh, so Phoenix is first, Havoc is right behind, and um, Bolt, you are... T turning immediately and heading in that direction, trying to stay steady to give Spectre a better shot. And as you are going forward, um, Ethan comes up directly beside you. And uh, I think this is probably something you've done before. Like Ethan comes up literally right beside you. You hold on to one handlebar from your bike and one handlebar from his bike. Uh, and you see him actually like turn, spin around to sit backwards, just like Spectre with the shotgun and is just firing, 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 firing. And between the shotgun blast and Spectre's sniper rounds, just echoing out throughout. You can hear um, over and over and over just gunfire. And Phoenix makes it through this false wall. Havoc runs through this false wall. Um, and then as soon as uh, Bolt and um, Ethan gets get close ethan turns back around grab like drops the shotgun shotgun's empty just discards it grabs onto the handlebars and both of you go through and you're able to push through finally get back to the road and you're just focusing on speed just speed until finally you don't you don't hear or see anyone behind you again and you are making your way back toward the spear headquarters and i think the camera kind of goes up as you are speeding away into the sky for a moment. Fade out. And now I want to know, where do we fade back in? Are we, like, debriefing after the mission? Are we just walking in? Like, what? where do you want this final scene to take place? I think we should be at the Spectre-sponsored cafe. Just drinking tea or coffee having a smoke after a very intense job. Are you still in all your gear and like dirty and everything? Of course. Absolutely. At least perfect. Spectre is. <laughs> I think that I Phoenix immediately tries to like come back to who they are as a person. They kind of like put their beanie back on 
they leave the rest of the gear intact and they look absolutely exhausted um <laughs> before we even get where we're going there's a joint hanging out of their mouths and they're just like ah, fucking long ass day they almost had us that was <laughs> fucked up that was fun that was uh quite the event there but hey we made it with really nary a scratch boss we getting a raise for this how are we keeping havoc and kibble on the salary we got <laughs> as soon as you say that i'm just now walking in because i didn't have clothes when i came back to <laughs> so uh <laughs> i'm coming in with uh new clothes and um some some alcohol in hand <laughs> <laughs> to pour in my coffee. Hey, yeah, hey. <laughs> Share oh, a little. Yeah, sure. <laughs> pour some yeah, Ethan's immediately holding a cup okay, out as yeah, well. All right, yeah. <laughs> Say that that's part of the bet. <laughs> I feel like, though, um, Havoc, I mean, technically, some of those scientists were jacked. I, I think I win that. Exactly. The okay, one that you was can't the prove they were scientists, though. They were airy soldiers. They but they were dressed well, like posing scientists. as scientists. That one Theranthrope, he did seem to know an awful lot about the serum. Mm -hmm. So I reckon he might be a scientist, uh, at least part-time. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Speaking of the serum, uh, Mutagen X has been delivered to Spear Labs. Pat yourselves on the back, and he gives like a little like silent clap. For a job well done, I'm sure we will be paid handsomely. At least $450. I hope at least $450. If it's more, that'd be great. Also, I think Phoenix whenever... is just like looking like for approval. Like, give us a good boy. <laughs> mm. I think he's used to this kind of and is intentionally drawing it out a little bit. Uh, you just see him, like, sipping. Can we just have the praise that we're expecting? <laughs> Be nice. Um, and you see him kind of turn to a stool and pull over a box of donuts and open them up. And he's like, I owe you donuts and I owe you... Good job. You, you all did fantastic. Thank you. You could have shot off that flare a little bit quicker, but other than that, uh... <laughs> Hey, Ethan, I have a question for you. Hmm. It's a very important question. How attached are you to your kneecaps? Uh, he just uh, glances. I'm sure, I assume you have your knife like somewhere on you. Uh -huh. Glances at the knife, glances back to you, and is like, you could try to find out, and winks and takes another drink. <laughs> cheers to another good mission. Everyone says cheers. And with the clink, while I'm giving future me a chance to figure out what the hell is going on with the giveaway in the chat right now, um, this is where I will have everybody tell me who you are and where we can find you. Hi, I'm Chrissy. Um, Chrissy and Keller on all the internet spaces. And um, yeah, so, so excited to have been part of this. And um, you can generally just just find me on Twitter. Um, I have no idea what projects I'll be on at any specific time. Um, usually you can find me with 12-sided stories on Tuesday evenings. Um, sometimes you can find me as part of the Etherlog podcast drop on Tuesdays. Um, and then besides that, it's all kind of up in the air as to when things release. So just, just find me on Twitter. Hi, I've been Candace. Uh, you can find me at that Candace girl on Twitter, at Candace the Magnificent, everywhere else. Um, I can be found here on Crossroads Games doing a variety of awesomeness, as well as on 12-Sided Stories every Tuesday and their podcast, Bookhound Bounty Hunters. Um, please just keep up with me on social to see what I'm up to next. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Piper, a.k.a. Matihi. You can find me on Twitch at Matihi. You can find me on Twitter at Maddie Matihi. Um, upcoming in April... Um, and such as always on my channel every other Saturday, I run What We Do in the Shallows, which is a 5e queer uh, pirate game. It's a lot of fun, very gay, very horny. Um, and also starting in April, I'm going to be over on Bad House with some amazing individuals playing uh, Cyberpunk Red, um, Shattered Dawn. It is going to be a good time, a uh, little short series there and really looking forward to it. And everything else you can find through Twitter, but that's mostly 
where you can find me. Um, hi, I'm Kaz. Um, I'm known on the internet as the Mini Arcanist. I don't have anything exciting to plug. Um, so if you want to find me on Twitter, uh, I paint miniatures. That's literally all I do with my free time now because it's taken up so much time. Um, but yeah, that's where you can find me. Um, I'll probably be on something for Carrie's channel, probably in the near future. What? Shocking. Something um, maybe Deadlands related? Something maybe Deadlands related. Um, I'm very excited. Um, so yeah, be on the lookout for that. I think it's going to be very wonderful. Um, so yeah, that's me. Perfect. And everyone's links are going to be in the description for you to go click away all that you want. Um, and we'll see you next time. That was wild. <laughs> that was <laughs> so good. Insane. So good. Amazing. Chase scenes forever. <laughs>